Hi, I'm Jen. I just finished binge watching season one of Absentia and I need to talk about it. These are going to be some of my thoughts, uh, theories, and a bit of a review about the show. Now, warning, heavy spoilers ahead. So if you haven't seen season one and you hate being spoiled, come back later. If you've already seen it or if you're like me and you don't care, let's get the party started. The premise of the show involves an FBI agent hunting down a serial killer in Boston. She goes missing and her husband ends up like marrying another woman. And six years later, he gets a call in the middle of the night saying his wife is still alive and she is found in a tank and she looks pretty rough. So the show kind of goes into like what happens to her after that. And then she's also trying to figure out what happened to her and the killings that had happened when she had first went missing start happening again, and she is one of the suspects. So a lot of the show is this FBI agent, Emily Byrne, kind of going on the run. She's a wanted person. And so some, some context here, I'm a big Stana Kadic fan. She plays Emily Byrne. Obviously, she played Kate Beckett on Castle, and that's the reason I was interested in checking out Absentia is because I was a fan of her work on Castle. So if you are a big SK fan, you will not be disappointed. Her acting work, I felt, was, was very good. She's very believable, and she really brings a lot of depth and really crazy hardcore intensity to the role. Her character, like, barely gets time to, like, sit down or take a break, and she's, she's on the gun. She's, you know, running and gunning throughout most of these episodes. It's, it's a fairly fast-paced show, although I will say I felt like some of the scenes where characters were, like, walking through abandoned buildings or, you know, wandering the, through the forest or through tunnels could be a little bit drawn out. And in fact, I ended up like fast forwarding through those parts. Um, but I really liked the character of Emily Byrne. She is not a lot like Kate Beckett. So if you're expecting like a castle-like show, this is not it. The show is pretty dark. I don't even think there was even like one scene where I found myself like laughing or smiling. It's, it's kind of a downer. So if you really like thriller dramas, this is for you. Um, but yeah, this is not a dramedy. This is definitely not a comedy. And the Emily Byrne character is, is certainly not at all like Beckett. So just know that going in and you'll be fine. Um, but I really liked the role of her. This is a woman who's, you're not sure if she's the good or the bad guy. She's definitely more of the anti-heroine. And, you know, I liked where it was going. So, okay, spoiler, what ends up happening to Emily is that she was adopted and was in, like, this orphanage as a kid. And uh, her, her child, like, her character as a child wasn't a very good kid. She got into a lot of fights, and her psychological profile would be unappealing to adoptive parents. So, as a kid, she ends up switching her psychological profile file with that of another child's. And then she ends up getting adopted, and then the other kid is left behind. Uh, the other kid's name was Logan Brandt, and uh, her and another boy at the facility, Charles, ended up getting experimented on, like, real crazy, like, psychological weird stuff by this, um, of course, Asian doctor, Dr. Shen. And then, of course, uh, this, this young girl, Logan, ends up growing up and wanting revenge on Emily. So uh, her and Charles end up killing Dr. Shen, and then uh, Logan and the guy, okay, so... The guy who ended up being convicted of Emily's quote-unquote murder, even though there was no body found, is a, like, rich guy named Conrad Harlow. I don't even know how, like, why he's rich, uh, but he ends up going to prison for Emily's death. But then when she's found later, he's released, but then winds up himself dead. So he apparently teamed up with Logan Brandt, who, it, this is a little confusing, but Logan ends up, like, masquerading as a journalist named, like, Lori Coulson. And uh, in the first episode, uh, she, she, you know, you see her like as a reporter. Now, I will say the premise of, I don't know if she got a job at, like, she, it looks like she's some sort of TV reporter. She seems to have gotten a job there or is at least posing at one. I would say this premise is a little far-fetched. I used to be a jur TV journalist myself. And I would say it's probably kind of difficult for someone to pretend to be a reporter because everyone kind of knows who everyone is. So it would be relatively easy for other journalists to realize that she's not who she says she is. Um, and the other thing is, if she really is working as a journalist, she's not going to have time for all this stuff. I want to be honest. And she ends up at one point bailing Emily's brother out of jail. But I'm like, where did she get the money for that? 
But anyways, so that it was a bit of a, uh, I felt a hole in the story. But in, in the first episode, um, Emily's in the hospital after being found and a dark figure is in her room. She ends up stabbing the figure and it's Logan slash Lori. Now I have a question. I was wondering what was she doing in the hospital room to begin with? Like that journalist character never really explained what they were doing in there. And I kind of wonder, you know, since Logan slash Lori ended up turning out to be the abductor slash killer, you know, what, like, what was the original intention for her being in the hospital room in the first place? Okay, so that's that. Um, I would say I'm, I'm intrigued by season one. I liked where the show was going. And there were still, like, the end of season one, you get a little bit of closure by finding out that Logan slash Lori was behind it with Conrad. But there were still some questions as, like, what specifically happened to Emily while she was abducted? You get a little bit of a taste, basically... Uh, Logan and Conrad ended up doing like the same type of experimentation on Emily that was done on Logan and this other kid Charles when they were younger and uh, six years was the length of time it happened to them. So basically the whole point of it was that they wanted to break down Emily and uh, take her life away just like Logan's and Charles's were taken away. Um, and I guess Dr. Shen's original premise was that he thought that by if kids could survive an earlyhood trauma and get through it with that sort of personality profile, that they could become like killing machines, like for the military or something. I don't know. Um, but I'm kind of curious, maybe in season two, we'll find out like, you know, what exactly did they do to Emily, you know? And since Emily fit the psychological profile of what Dr. Shen was looking for, you know, has Emily turned into a killing machine herself? You kind of, at the end, you uh, find out that um, Emily may have been the one, it looks like she's the one who killed Conrad Harlow by drowning him in a, like a, a swimming pool or something, you know, and, uh, Logan at the end references that Emily was the one, you know, that she didn't kill all these people. Maybe Emily did, you know, kind of like been brainwashed. I don't know. So anyways, I have a lot of questions about that storyline. I think it'll be interesting. I just heard the season has been picked up for season two. And by the way, it is available on Amazon Prime. So if you don't have it yet, definitely check it out. I will link it below. So let's move on to some other thoughts I have about the show. Now, I don't know if we're supposed to hate Alice and Nick, but I hate Alice and Nick. So Nick was Emily's husband, uh, Nick Durand, and Alice is his new wife. Now, I don't know. I just, I just did not like these characters. Maybe we're not supposed to. Um, but I just found that the way they acted on the way their characters acted, I didn't feel like they would be very realistic to how a real person would act in that situation. So obviously Nick has uh, moved on from Emily. He thinks she's dead. So he has remarried this chick, Alice. And Alice is now raising Emily and Nick's son, Flynn, who's like eight years old. So I guess in the story, like Flynn was like two when Emily disappeared you know, so six years have passed and uh, you get the feeling that Alice and Nick have been together for a while. I don't know how long. And that's something I would like to know, like, you know, how soon after Emily went missing, did Nick move on? And that's something I, I kind of have some issues with. So here's my thoughts about, um, I'll go first into to Alice. So Alice has become like Flynn's mother, you know, basically like replacement mom since she thinks Emily is dead. Now, and I get it, you know, if you think your husband's previous wife is dead, you don't feel like she's going to be a threat or she's coming back. And in this case, she did. So that's something that nobody really saw coming. Um, although there was no body found. So, I mean, somewhere in Nick and Alice's mind, shouldn't they have kind of prepared themselves for what might happen if Emily had been found? I don't know. They just kind of seem like that was like the, the most far-fetched thing that could ever happen when in reality, you know, if no body's found, you know, anything could happen. So where we pick up in the story is that Emily ends up trying to figure out how to integrate herself into Nick's new life and Flynn's new life. And I kind of felt like Alice was being like a little bit insensitive towards the whole situation. So clearly she thinks she's Flynn's mom, even though she's not, she has no relation to this kid whatsoever. You know, but she did help raise him. Um, but I would think that maybe Alice and Nick have been together, like I would hope not more than four or five years. Because uh, that would be Nick really moved on pretty fast, if you know what I'm saying. Um, and I mean, that's a significant amount of time, but that's not like a super long time, in my opinion. So for her to be like, oh my gosh, Flynn's my kid, you know, like calm, 
you know, calm the F down, lady. It's only been like four years that you've been in his life, you know? So I don't know. I felt like she could have been a little more accommodating to Emily since Emily's actually his mom. And I don't know. I kind of felt like she was, she could have been a little, you know, a little more understanding, you know? And, you know, again, she's been in the kid's life for four years. Not, you know, that's not like a lifetime. I'm just saying here. So I don't know. That I just found a little bit annoying. Uh, but she... In parts of the episode, she didn't really seem to want Emily to have a relationship with Flynn, and it seemed like she was trying to keep Flynn away from his mother, which I thought was kind of a douchey move, in my opinion, Alice. So, I don't know. I don't really care for the Alice character. She's a little bit jealous of Emily coming back. But at the same time, Nick and Alice have, like, really major communication issues, and I felt like that could have really helped their situation quite a bit. If they had just talked about what was going on, but... Nick clearly is not much of a communicator, and I really felt like that caused a lot of that couple's problems. I'm going to be honest, I don't care if Alice and Nick are written off the show. You know, I almost think it would be kind of a better show if they were. Um, and I'll, I'll talk about my, my issues with Nick. Okay, so Nick, in one scene, Emily's father is berating him and telling him off for basically giving up on Emily too soon. You know, he, you know, kind of calls him out for not taking his wedding vow seriously and makes a reference that Nick had given up after a year. A year? Seriously, dude? Okay, so this guy is an FBI. They're both FBI agents. Now, he's supposed to be like solving crime and tracking down people as his entire career. And I kind of find it hard to believe that an FBI agent would give up looking for his wife after only a year. That is not that long of a time period. And again, working in TV news and as a journalist, I've seen many stories and cases where someone spent their, the rest of their life looking for justice and truth. And this guy seems to have thrown in the towel, like, in my opinion, way, way, way too soon, dude. Um, I would really hope that if I went missing, my husband would spend more than a year looking for me. And if he did get with Alice after only a year, I think that's kind of tacky. I don't know. So that's my biggest beef with Nick is that he is an FBI agent. Again, even normal people that didn't have a police background would probably spend more than a year looking for their loved one. If he really did give up after only a year, that's kind of chintzy. Um, so I'm not a Nick fan. I, I don't know. The actor who plays him, I'm sure the actor who plays him is, is an okay guy. But on the show, I'm just, I'm just not a fan. Also, he kind of sucks at solving crime. Um, clearly he couldn't even find his first wife. And then his uh, new wife, Alice, ends up getting abducted with Flynn by Logan later on in the, in the season. And he wasn't even able to find them. It was Emily who ended up putting all the pieces together and calling him to give him the information. So, I don't know, Nick, I think you're kind of a sucky FBI agent. When, you're, when your first wife, who's severely traumatized from six years in captivity can solve crimes faster than you can. I don't know, just my thoughts. I, I was not a fan. I just, I don't know. I just felt his character kind of unbelievable that an FBI agent would not spend more than a year looking for his wife. I mean, I, I've been married for several years. I'm 100% sure my husband would not rest until, like if this happened to me, he would not give up ever. And I would really hope that Anyone who's married would have a spouse that would also constantly be on the quest for justice. I mean, let's compare that to the show Castle that Stana Kadek was on previously. You know, Stana Kadek's character Kate Beckett spent like over a decade looking for her mother's killer and she did not rest until she found justice. Let's also take a look at Castle. Castle was also invested in the case and that wasn't even his own family. Or the show Monk, where Adrian Monk does not give up until he finds his wife's killers. So, I don't know. I feel like there's, even on TV shows and movies, the character who has lost a spouse or had something happen to them, like, they never give up. They always have that drive to find out, you know, the truth and what really happened to their loved one. And I kind of felt like the, the Nick character was lacking any of that. And that's why I was kind of like, what the hell, man? Like... A year? Really? A year? That's like the biggest problem I have with him. Also that he sucks at solving crimes. So those are some of my thoughts on Absentia. I was thinking an interesting storyline for season two or a future, you know, 
a story arc might be that Nick gets abducted and has the same thing happen to him. And when he comes back, maybe Alice is remarried to like Emily's brother, Jack or something. But anyways, I don't know. Those are the things that kind of bothered me about the show. Now, again, overall, I enjoyed the show and I would recommend it to others. Again, it is not a family friendly show and is not a show that will like that's very uplifting or optimistic. So if you're looking for that, you won't get that with Absentia. But it was an interesting premise and I did uh, enjoy watching. In fact, it, I was like so on the edge of my seat. I ended up watching it until 8 a.m. One, one night. So that's how invested I was in seeing what happened. They use a lot of like really super creepy music. So again, you are kind of scared. Um, but yeah, so that's what I think of the show. I don't know, out of a one to 10, I would probably give it like a, like a set. I would maybe give it, let's give it a seven out of 10 stars here if, if it was on a star rating. Um, but yeah, by far, I think the, my least favorite characters on the whole thing, Alice and Nick, um, producers, director, if you want to, writers, if you want to write them off the show, that would be totally okay with me. Um, in fact, I think an interesting future for Emily would be she stays single, she starts kicking ass and taking some names, and then her and Flynn develop more of a relationship, and Emily stays her, like, strong, badass self. That would be the most ideal situation for her. Um, but I don't know, I just really felt like the character of Nick was a pretty big weenie, and I thought Alice was, I don't know, she just wasn't very nice, sympathetic, and I really felt like in that situation she really should have, uh, stepped aside a bit and let Emily have more of a relationship with Flynn. I don't know. It's just what I think. And again, from Emily's side, it's not like she left the family or anything. She was abducted, not by choice. You know, clearly her life has fallen apart. And when she, you know, when she comes back, she doesn't know she no longer has a husband. Those things about the show definitely frustrated me. I'm curious to see what happens in the next season. Uh, if you've seen the show Absentia, let me know what you think as well. Did you find those parts also kind of frustrating? And if there's another show or movie you'd like to, me to review and do a random stream of conscious video on, let me know and I will consider it.